it up, nah, I ain't a quitter Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter Big picture, I'm a straight killer I send the song to the highest bidder Got juice, got gas <laughs> So <laughs> Welcome to the Lightning Podcast I'm your host, Lynn Podcast I'm, I'm It's my co-host, Jay Co-host So, uh Today we're going to be talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Both my hearts. Both my hearts, I've been, I've been following Seth MacFarlane since he was working on Johnny Bravo. And you actually introduced me to the Orville. You told me I had to watch it. And I was like, no, no, I don't like Seth MacFarlane. Even though I didn't really know the guy. You knew Never, Family Guy. I knew Family Guy. And I'm not, I'm a, I'm a more serious kind of person. I don't like comedy too much. That's why I kind of stayed away from anything Seth MacFarlane. But I finally watched the Orville. And it wasn't until... Um, the season one, it was um episode the episode called Majority Rule. That's oh, when I that's where, when I became a Seth MacFarlane and the Orville fan. Is that that's the one where they go to the planet where people get like upvoted or like downvoted, Up right? And downvoted. Yeah. Th- that's when I said to myself, Seth MacFarlane is a genius. <laughs> this man is a mad scientist. So very I became creative. a huge fan. He's, He's very talented. Yeah. He can sing too. He can. Like well, I haven't heard him sing, I don't think. Do you all remember when he hosted, I think, the Grammys? No, I heard about it, though. I mean, I heard it was really funny. Yeah. But, uh, no, I am not a Grammys watcher either. <laughs> so. Um, no comedy, no music. No comedy, yeah. no music. Wait, Grammys, is that the music? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking the Oscars. <laughs> it might have been the Oscars. So, matter. the characters that he's created, um, it's not just, you know, those, like, two-dimensional just taking up space kind of characters. Right. Like every character has an arc, every character has a story and they have their own like personality. Sometimes the personalities get melded together and like every character seems the same almost. Well, it, it seems like he took time to be, not just craft the story, but craft the, the characters and then let the story tell itself based off how they are. Right. How right. the character should be. Right, and you could tell like he was heavily influenced by Star Trek. Well, obviously. Heavily You influenced. can't do sci-fi without he, acknowledging yeah. Pepper Your Hat. Yeah, Marina Sirtis. I think it was season two. He, Marina Sirtis played the school teacher um, in, a, <laughs> in an episode where uh, Topo was the focus. <laughs> what? Um, which uh, which character was Marina Sirtis on Star Trek? Deanna Troy. Thank you. I couldn't What's wrong with you? you? I like Star Wars. Oh, my God. Anyways, <laughs> Marina Sirtis. <laughs> Played the teacher in one of the episodes, <laughs> and I and also and they had Penny Marshall. Penny Marshall actually starred in Deep Space Nine. She was a reoccurring star, and she was. Can uh, you reoccur and star? Uh, Penny Marshall. <laughs> Penny Marshall was actually uh, a guest star mm-hmm. um, on Deep Space Nine, and she was she 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 re. Now stuff. you got me all messed up. No, so Penny Marshall was actually she dated Benjamin Sisko. Her character dated Benjamin Sisko, um, Cassidy Yates. Okay, okay, okay. It's funny because I didn't like her in Deep Space Nine, but when it came to the Orville, I was so happy to see her. You know, it's funny how people how like that nostalgia comes back. And it was the nostalgia that just made me love her, and she's actually one of my favorite people in the Orville. Um, her character. Oh, okay. Well, now you just talk, touch on something. Who is actually your favorite character on in the Orville? My favorite character. It would have to be Bordis, only because Bordis, his deadpan attitude, kind of reminds me of Worf. It does. He's clearly modeled after like a, a Klingon. Oh, yeah. Um. I don't know. I can't even say he's my favorite. I love them all because they all, they're all different. I love them for different reasons. I think if I had to pick the girls, I say uh, Tala is my mm. favorite. I like Tala. Okay. Um, I I, I miss um the other girl. I can't remember her name. The one who the the Zelan before her, the security officer. Oh yeah, there was another one. Yeah, I I I was so upset that she was taken off the show and Robert Picardo. From Voyager, he played the doc, the holographic doctor. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. played her father in this show. I don't, like he, I remember <laughs> the first season. There was so many nods to Star Trek, and I remember seeing characters, but I never remember. I don't know all the names. Right, you always had the names down, so I always yeah. found it really impressive. Like I watched the show, I'm like, okay, I know this, I follow the story, but I can never remember any of the names. Yeah, yeah. Robert Picardo, I was happy to see him. Mm-hmm. So, and also Brandon Braga wrote a number of episodes. Brandon Braga was one of the 
um, top people, or one of the most recognizable names in Star Trek. Well, it's Generations, apparent Deep Space Nine, that Voyager. So it's apparent that he um, got people who knew the genre well to yeah. write it because it's a very well written show. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, and then, um, so we got a top ten list here that we want to. We're gonna go. From uh from number ten, work our way to one of things we want to see or hope to see if they ever give us a yay or nay. Hopefully a yay on <laughs> the on, Orville, on the Orville New Horizons season two or season four. However, it, uh, you it know, never gets it, it on air. Exactly. Okay? I don't care if they call it like box. You can call it Star Trek. <laughs> call it whatever you want. Just do it. As long as it comes back. You still got the Kermit. <laughs> yeah. And I love the, the the little nod to like the 21st century that they yeah. do, like like Kermit the Frog, um, Kermit the Billy Frog. Joel. Huh. I hated Billy Joel because it of you. Blows my mind. When I was a kid, how do you hate? Well, Billy I was Joel. a kid. Actually, I was what 20, 21, and you would just blast that song for the longest time over and over again, and it made me hate Billy Joel. For the record, she meant that the song I played was for the longest time, but I did play it for the longest time. It's time. It, it's double oh. meaning in that. <laughs> <laughs> so, played it for the longest time. It's a fantastic song. No, shout out Billy Joel. He made me hate this man. And it wasn't until Seth MacFarlane. It took Seth MacFarlane. You didn't like Seth MacFarlane either. I put you on both of them. Exactly. And he played <laughs> that song. And I'll tell you the song that made me love Billy Joel. And I went down a deep hole, rabbit hole, of listening to, to Billy Joel. Don't do it. Okay, <laughs> listening to Billy Joel. It was She's Always a Woman to Me. That's, that's the you. one that did it for me. I listened to that song probably a million times after I watched the All episode. the fantastic Billy Joel song. Huh? That's the one you go with. Okay. That's the one. Um, I also like Piano Man. I mean, that's a classic. Well, you know, there are different people on there who like different things. Okay, so, whatever. <laughs> my point is, it all led you to the right spot. It all led me to the right spot. <laughs> Got to where I needed to be. So, Billy Joel's awesome. And I'm sorry, I regret it took me years and years to find that out. <laughs> but they, you, you, you did nail it. They, he, he really did a great job in making it more modern because it's really more like a modern, like if Star Trek was made, was updated. Like Discovery is is, is is a really cool show and like new and um what's the other one with, with Pike? What's it called? Uh, Strange New Worlds. Strange New Worlds. It's cool, but it still has that old school way of, of doing sci-fi. I don't know how, how else to really describe it. Well, where this is much more of a modern take, I think, on the sci-fi space exploration genre. And I feel like it includes more of the humanity. Like um, in season one, yeah. when Kelly first comes aboard, she catches um, Malloy and he's in a hurry to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. yeah. You never hear them talking about going to the bathroom yeah. in Star Trek any series. Well, where does it go? Mm -hmm. Where does the poop go? I don't is it know. I mean, is it in space? I have no idea. No, I didn't think this, about it that be, far. If I, had, I was in my starship and the poop just went across my starship windshield. No, I'm, I'm sure they have more, <laughs> a much more sophisticated way. I would hope so. I'm getting, I'm getting rid of the poop. They shoot it into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to uh, dive into these top 10 here. Okay. So number 10, John Lamar and Sala Kiali. Yeah, a romance cut way too short. That was cut way too short. And if you go back and you look at the first, um, one of the first episodes where they hint at it was um, was Shadow Realms, episode mm. two of season three, when Kiali gets promoted to Lieutenant Commander and she makes a, a joke about, well, it wasn't really a joke, but she was glad that she could just call him John now yeah. instead of by his rank. And he was happy about it too. And he, he was like, I'm, you know, I'm glad you can call me that too. And it was a kind of... Um, you know, has yeah, moment. a little flirtatious moment, and she's like, you know, you trying to tell me something here, but they got interrupted by Isaac. Um, <laughs> and then there were just other moments, like when um, during that same episode, Shadow Realms, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll talk about that episode later because it's actually on the list here. Um, she actually volunteered to go find him because he had no idea what was going on. It was her who volunteered to go find him and make sure he was okay, and she rescued saved him from those two. Uh, shadow demons, whatever you want to call them. Mm. Um, I don't think they ever gave them a name, but I can't um, recall the name, even if they did. You're much better at names. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think they gave them a name. It's a, a lot of aliens in this show that they did not give names. Well, um, because 
they haven't made a season four yet. <laughs> and so they haven't been able to expand because this world has so much potential where it could go. Yeah. Um, such And like that romance, like, you know, one thing that I really, um, I like when they were, you know, fooling around and he kept coming in with like bruises and broken arms and stuff like that, which is hilarious. That's exactly what it would be like with a, 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 a when you, for a human in a relationship with a much more powerful partner. <laughs> Yeah, it reminded me almost like the only person who she could probably be with was, um, if you go back to that episode in was it season two? Yeah, I think it was season two, where she hooked up with Lokar, uh, Boris's ex boyfriend. Oh yeah. Yeah, like she didn't hurt him, and I mean all they did was make out, but still. Well, he's not human. Boris is, is a... exactly. He's a little bit more sturdy, so. <laughs> um, thick. Yeah. So. <laughs> I wonder if that relationship will ever come back around. Um, I feel like it, it's the it's a kind of relationship they can use just to create tension, because obviously it's going to come to a point where they just can't sustain that. So it can they can either maybe develop uh, John in a way to where he I don't know he gets some kind of enhancement like maybe he becomes a cyborg or something where now he's or or maybe like something happens to her and she loses her strength. But then she's also losing her role because she can't act as the security officer anymore. So yeah. they could do a lot with that. That's the yeah, that's the conundrum. And then I think I liked it because John, through the whole series, was a womanizer. He really was. And he gave it like Isaac such horrible, horrible advice, <laughs> <laughs> which ended with uh, Doctor Finn basically threatening him bodily harm <laughs> if she if he, if he ever gave Isaac advice again <laughs> so it was nice to see him actually care about a woman and try to make it work yeah. to his own physical detriment so, <laughs> so and I did notice one thing though that last time when they were in bed and she's just crying her eyes out and she says I want you to know I always love you mm -hmm. and he says I want to miss spending time with you he still hasn't let go of that little he hasn't opened himself up completely, but he opened himself up himself up more to her than he did with any other woman. Yeah, because he didn't he didn't reciprocate that sentiment. I mean, he might end up uh, with the K one. Are there any female K ones? No, not that I see. But that does take me into our number nine, uh, mm -hmm. Lucilla, who was the barista from uh, the Majority Rule episode. I um, remember him flirting with the girl on the planet. Yeah, from Sardis Four. Right, so I think it was what episode seven, majority rule of season one. Sure. They flirted. They were flirting. Him and uh, Lacella were flirting um, until she thought she figured out that he had done something bad. Yeah. You know, he, he had all those big downs. Yeah, well, that does kind of put a damper on a relationship. Right, and now <laughs> she's on the ship. So oh, I, don't, I didn't remember her getting on the Orville. She got on the Orville in the last episode. That was Lacella. They went and they picked her up. Dude, didn't you watch it? Yeah. Yeah, that was Lacella. From... I told you, I don't remember. You don't all remember the that? Stuff. No. <laughs> okay. I don't remember all the details. I followed the story, but I oftentimes like miss a lot of the, a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Out so to. that was from season. That was a callback to season one. He does a lot of callbacks to his previous seasons or previous episodes, mm -hmm. and she was in the last episode of season three. Um, she's now on the ship, and she's basically been taken under Kelly's wing mm -hmm. and since her I kinda like that. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna maybe if we get to see a season four, maybe Lacella Lysella was she since she kinda liked him when she first met him and he liked her. Um maybe something will happen between those two and it can cause some friction between Tala and John or Tala and Lysella. That would be cool to see. Yeah, I, I would like that. And I would um, I'd like that. Yeah. And it just makes me wonder how Lysela is like acclimating to um, her new surroundings because she's from a world that's basically like the 21st century uh, Earth, like right now. Mm -hmm. They haven't advanced as far as um, Earth and all these other uh, planets have yet. So I imagine what that would be like. It's a culture shock. It's a literal culture shock. Yeah. So she's going to have to acclimate to what's yeah. going on and things like that. There are spaceships, there are aliens, not just aliens. They're in the middle of the Galactic War and might destroy your planet because it's in the wrong spot. You know? And it's it's hilarious that no one has tried to... It, I, it makes me wonder where Sargis 4 is, really, mm -hmm. um, in comparison to the Krill and the Mocklins. Yeah. So the Mocklins aren't really a warrior race like the Krill are, but yeah, it just... Calm, yeah, it, it just makes me wonder... 
where they are in the galaxy to where they haven't been invaded. Because you know the Krill think it's their divine right and they'll just run amok over anybody. It is their divine right. If you say so. <laughs> well, praise be to Avis, right? Be to <laughs> so, right. Okay. Uh, the Kalons. The Kalons, yes. Uh, Temis. Number eight. Will we, um, will we see the Kalon Temis again? I mean, we have to, right? We have to. And it makes me wonder, has Temis and Isaac stayed in touch? I didn't notice that uh, Isaac invited him to the wedding. That would have made a lot of sense. I don't think they can because neither of them are plugged up to the network. Remember um, the reason the, 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 the virus didn't work on, on um, Isaac is because he's no longer part of the network that all the K-Line are connected to, how they communicate. So, I mean, how would he communicate with No, he just, no, Tim is, I mean, not Tim is, but Isaac, if you look back at episode, the last episode of season three, he just contacted them just like, like through subspace. I mean, like he just sent him a text that's, message. That's all, yeah, he basically hey, sent him a, like a, a no, he, he FaceTimed him. That's what he did. That's what I'm saying. Like, why he couldn't just FaceTime Tim is, yo, 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 what's up? Maybe he really liked him like, like that. Come to my, come to my wedding. <laughs> Maybe his feelings made it's him, emotional. made Isaac uncomfortable. He's like, hey, look, man, you gotta keep all that crying to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice to see Timmis actually at the wedding. Um, I think it would have been appropriate. It would have been very appropriate. Yeah. Um, despite what Isaac may say, or oh, I don't have feelings, I don't this or that. He does, in a way, have feelings because why? It, not feelings in the way that we feel them, but he knows. Like um, episode I can't remember what episode it was, but he 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 got he hooked up with Claire, mm -hmm. and he wanted to break up with her, but do it in a way that he could still like be cordial with her. Mm -hmm. And so that's when, you know, Lamar gave him that horrible advice. <laughs> but he ended up t towards the middle of the episode basically saying that I'm better with, with you than without you. My systems function better with you than without you. It's like he can recognize. I mean, that's less of a, that's not really emotional though. He, he's just being it's practical. It's his form of emotion. He's being, I mean, I guess you could say it's his form of emotion, but it's really more just zeros and ones this makes sense i my operating system works better in, with this person so oh. <laughs> i'm going to be with this person all the time so i'm at peak efficiency exactly so i mean it's his way love but when he did get the emotion chip you saw how he professed his love yeah like he truly did love claire so that th that's why she agreed to marry and I, him I, and i think that's why timis has to come back because that is a, a fantastic like imagine they could cr they could actually combine the ingenious, the ingenious of the genius of the Kalons and actual humans. Mm -hmm. I mean, and also, are Kalons able to have children? Actually, if we, um, I have a question about that too. Um, further on, I think it's, it's number six. Okay. But um, uh, going back to Timis, mm -hmm. I feel like Timis is going to show up again. Yeah. If we get a season four, he's gonna show up again and he's gonna find a way to help Isaac capture those emotions and keep them for it because he was created after the Kalon, after the original Kalon. Right. So I think he's gonna work on a way or figure out a way to help Isaac and all the others that came after the original Kalon. Like to get him an upgrade. It's, get them, it'll be yeah. cool mm -hmm. if the, 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 the emotion that Isaac picks up is anger. Wow. Can you imagine seeing Isaac angry? Angry Isaac or like vindictive Isaac be a menace. Like someone maybe hurts Claire. Oh, dude. Or hurts Ty. Oh, man. Oh, my God. It would be on. Like the way, the way uh, Bordis was when um he, the dude had beat his daughter. Oh, my and God. And he found him in that cave. That Isaac would be like that nonstop. Mm -hmm. And that also takes me back to another thing. I'm off topic real quick. Tony Todd was in the was in the Orbital. Tony Todd was a was a freaking Lachlan. That suits Tony Todd. <laughs> exactly. That's so, funny. I didn't know so that. that. Yeah, and you just brought that back to my mind. Um, Lachlan's makeup is impressive because the even the uh, Tyrese I didn't know I didn't realize that was him. Tyrese. Yeah, from The Walking Dead. Oh yeah, yeah. He was a. Uh, uh, you mean uh, uh, Chad Coleman? Yeah, he Chad was Clyden. Yeah. I didn't even realize he was Clyden. I didn't realize it was him either, and I didn't realize that the um, that Bordis was the guy from. Um, okay, I don't know his name off the top of my head, but he played in Shameless. He was Carl's girlfriend's Shane. dad. I was seeing Shameless. Okay. But yeah, that's who that is. But yeah, the makeup is really good. And the only reason I knew it was Tony Todd is because I know Tony Todd, no matter what he's, he's the voice. disguised as. 
<laughs> he has this aura about him. But yeah, I digress. Very, 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 yeah, <laughs> so I, I hope we do see Timmis again. Yeah. Um, And that takes me to the K-Line. Do you think that this truce with the K-Line will hold? I do. Because the K-Line are practical, but they're also not actually malicious. The K-Line weren't destroying biologicals because they got any kind of joy out of it. It was literally preservation. It was the ones and zeros, right? We want to survive. Biologicals are evil. So we got to get rid of biologicals. So I think as long as the union doesn't do anything that's messed up, I can't think of any reason why they would betray him. I mean, the way their people have been portrayed, I think I think it'll hold. Yeah, I think it will hold too. And I think in the episode Domino, which that that episode the end broke my heart with uh, uh, charlie charlie and then with yeah. the uh, uh k-line primary looking at her before right. he walks away he just couldn't he couldn't like he's like he's trying to compute what uh, the heck is happening here like you ever see a dog and you do something and the dog's curious about it like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's he's what, just what, like, what, what he was doing yeah what is happening right here but you know what <laughs> speaking about Timmis, right mm-hmm. if say Timmis did figure out a way to let the Kalons experience all the brings of emotions. What would be a sick storyline in season four? Would be them learning jealousy. And like say Kalon secondary kills Kalon primary. That's how the Kalon could get Katarn on the union. Right. Like you could you always gotta have that Lucifer. Always gotta have you gotta have the Lucifer. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's the only that, that, way I could see it happen. Yeah, I think the 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 primary that we left off with, I think he's thinking logically, but I do think yes, you're right. Emotion can be very dangerous. Yeah. To give the K-Law. Um, they wouldn't know how to manage it. They've never had to deal with it. Yeah. They be highs and lows, like yeah. major peaks and valleys. Yeah, yeah. and Timmons was a little. Mm, for my taste, he was a little too sassy. Good. He looked too good. Oh, too for my ethical. taste. Like I was waiting that whole episode where they introduced him. I was waiting for him to do something crazy, something, something. to turn on him with these emotions. Because like, like, uh, like Lore from Star Trek mm. got Data, who did not have emotions, and he was good. He had integrity. But then you have Lore, who had the emotions, which he kind of stole from his brother. They, they were intended for Data, but Lore took them. Well, you know, you know, and what? he was jealous of Data. Of course, he was. Data had everything. Okay. He always had the emotions. So for him, it's not something he has to learn to navigate. Well, no, that's not true. Right, you're right. He didn't. He did. They had to have. They did have to program him. Mm-hmm. But they had. They always had the ability. It just needed off. to be act- activated. Right. Right. So I don't know. I feel like if they got their hands on emotions, they wouldn't know how to handle them, and they would be very erratic. True. True. I agree with that assessment. Now moving on to another alliance. The Krill and the Mockley. Which is fantastic. You think it's fantastic? I really like the Krill as a race. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 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 under the leadership of Taylor, uh, Talea, mm-hmm. uh, um, I like it. I don't know who's going to be the, the Chancellor now. Since she's in um, since she's in um, the Union prison on Earth, I don't know who uh, would be the Chancellor. But I like the Alliance because the Mocklins do have the power. But they don't have the brain power to run things. And she had that. And I feel like with the strength of the Moglins and the deviousness and willingness of the Krill, it'd be a real problem for the Union. I feel like, yes, it would have at first be a problem, but then it's it's not viable. It's not a viable relationship. The Moglins, a patriarchal patriarchy, mm-hmm. and they have really no respect for women. They didn't even want Talia to lead. They thought it was insulting. Mm-hmm. But and she basically told them like, "You guys are stupid. You 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 don't have the cunningness and right. the way of a woman. You can't do what a woman can do." Right. And so, and I guess you know they agreed to let you know her lead. But I don't think it's a viable relationship. The, the Krill are too zealous. They're overly zealous in their faith to where it's almost. Um, uh, what, what do you call it? It's almost a handicap for them. Mm. Because it's, look at Talia. This woman can't think outside of the great Avis. No, it's not that. It's that she is a, has a divine purpose. She believes she has a divine purpose. Uh, Avis believes it. No, if, if you go back and you look at the first her first appearance, yeah. she's teaching a room full of children 
basically that they are the divine race. They um basically are owed everything. Mm-hmm. They can kill this person, take this planet, do whatever, because they are divine. They deserve it. Yeah, they deserve it, and it's theirs by right. I mean, you're going off of this this philosophy that you were taught, obviously, from a child, and you're holding on to it for dear life, because I feel like if she, I feel like she, it's not even that she necessarily believes it, believes it, believes it, like she's portraying. I feel like she's looking for what she was told her whole life. This is the way, it, I think I'm kind of explaining it wrong, is she's trying to hold on to something because, hold on to this faith, because without it, like, she has nothing. She doesn't know who she is. They don't even know who they are as a people because um, because Mercer told her, he, he mentioned to her, he said, before your species ventured out into the galaxy, you guys weren't the zealous. You guys weren't all into Avis like this. He said, it was just when you became aware of others in the galaxy that you guys got Assuming xenophobic. Yeah, you guys got xenophobic and, and, and you became this zealous. He's like, it's not real, basically. It's, it's an illusion what you're doing. Like, you're holding on to this faith because I think the more time goes by, the more their shake, their faith, or maybe not necessarily hers, I think her faith is being shaken, which is why she's holding on for dear life. And she has this, mo- this, this model, like you said, one of the best lines ever in a TV show. Mm-hmm. The divine... A divine... Fulfillment. The fulfillment of the divine, divine purpose, purpose. Eclipses all family bonds. Yeah, think about that. Great line. It's a great line, but think about it. Well, that's what it's like to have the mantle of of, of, of greatness on your shoulder, mm-hmm. and and not just the, not just the feeling like you have it, but having the support of the people. Mm-hmm. Remember, they staged the coup and they overthrew the chancellor. But she used fear. Not entirely. She inspired. She, well, she inspired, she but inspired she inspired all- fear. I don't, I don't fear of them losing who they were. I think for some people, for sure, mm-hmm. but it, it still inspired the feelings that was lay dormant. So whether she's deranged or misled or what have you, her ability to lead is there. And so it's not only that she believes it, but she believes it, they believe it. And that it's like adding to each other and it becomes a cycle to where it just gets bigger and bigger. So even if she is losing faith, it's re is reignited by the fact that they all believe it. True. They're validating they, each they're other. They're validating each other. Right. And that makes sense to why when she um when <laughs> when uh Mercer found out who she really was, he's like, Did you even like the like the movie nights? Did um did you like any of the movies? And he, she was like, Yeah, I like basically the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. And he's like, who was your favorite character? And she mentioned some guy, I can't remember his name, but he was a Nazi. He, he goes, over Nazis. Nazis. <laughs> like, he says, yes, I find the leader sympathetic. He's like, they're the bad guys. <laughs> so that kind of thought process. See, they're uh, obviously the bad guys. <laughs> obviously the bad guys. And she also, um, it's a poem that I've always loved. And I first heard it um, 1986, 1987, Osmandius. Um, it's, it goes something like, my name is Osmandy. There, w- there was a traveler from an antique land, um, and there was um, some kind of uh, monument coming up out of the ground, and on the monument, these, these words appear. I am as Mo- Osmandius, king of kings, look upon my works and despair. But when you look out over this monument, there was nothing but bare land. Basically, it was a kingdom that destroyed itself from within. And I think, and she actually made the um, set the line. I choose the way of Osmandius because she's seeing it as he had a purpose. He fulfilled his purpose, no matter nothing else matters. I mean, so yeah, it's, it's messed up, but it's kind of like what I was saying with the the chick from Downton Abbey. Yes, it's it's whether it's right or wrong in the context of the show is irrelevant. They believe it and they're sticking to it and they act in that. And I, I do like that as a, in characters. What I do think would happen though is with the Krill and the Mocklins is that with her being out of the way, the Krill are going to need a new Chancellor. If the Chancellor is a male, I think that Krill Mocklin alliance would actually be very powerful. I think what would eventually happen though is that the Krill, if they do manage to, uh, to overpower the, the K-Line and Union Alliance, that I do think eventually they're gonna have to take out the Mocklins. 
I, they'll steal their tech and they'll start eliminating. I thought maybe like you that it would be a male who comes to power, mm -hmm. and the male will also find out about Talia and Mercer's daughter. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm exactly. saying I feel like when I say her faith is shaken, I'm saying it because whether she wants to be uh, admit it or not, she feels something for Ed Mercer. Of course. Which is why she tried to get him out of harm's way before she killed everybody else. That'd be a fantastic couple, and, like if they could make that work, honestly. Yeah. And it makes you like, will she? And we got to see Anaya, you know, in Gentle Rain. We found out about her. Her name actually means gentle, a gentle rain. Yeah. Um, and when Mercer, this is another thing that got me. And she go, he goes, why did you have her? If you were just gonna lock her away, why did you have her? And then he takes, she takes him, and she shows him what happens to people who terminate their pregnancy they are forced to face the child that would have been so that was that was kind of powerful i don't know if he was seth McFarlane was trying to make a statement there but Probably think about it if, if you're McFarlane. forced to face the child that would have been that would be hard hard for a lot of people very hard. um um so i mean but i but i do but i also don't think she's gonna put her daughter at risk i think she's talking a lot of game but if she wanted yeah, her daughter to I, be in danger yeah. She she would be. Yeah, I think she would she would jump ship, and I think she wouldn't even have probably a chance to jump ship. I mean, it wouldn't even be a choice. She would have to because this new supreme chancellor, whoever he may be, and I'm saying he because I truly believe it would be another a, a guy. No um, he's going to out her as a fraud. All this you did, all this rah rah talk. Mm -hmm. And you didn't made a baby with one of these humans. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of these. And hide, hid them away on the sacred world of Krill under the eye of Avis? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. How dare you? That's blasphemy. So she, I don't think she's going to have a choice mm -hmm. but to join with the Union and to join with Mercer and to, to protect their daughter. Um, I think that would be fantastic. That would be a great I would love art. to see her in a Union uniform, mm -hmm. serving on the Orville. Oh, God. Think of the tension between her and... Uh, and Kelly. And Kelly. Oh, yeah. man, the tension uh, with a knife. <laughs> I, I would love to see that. Season four. Come on. Season four. Yeah, please. Um, Seth, all the powers that be will get to that. You're actually number one. We'll get to all the pleading <laughs> and the begging. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, I think she will come around for the sake of her daughter and do the right thing finally. I hope they never they never cut out that um that evil arrogant streak though that yeah. she's just and not you know I don't want her necessarily to be more ethical I just want her to be on the union side. I can see her dying, I can see her sacrificing herself for from for some great cause. She it would have to be very. It have to be for some great cause like what uh what Charlie did. I really want to see that. Yeah, her sacrifice cemented the front the. The treaty between the Kalon and the Union. I think you call it friendship. That's what um, hmm. that's what Isaac called it. Friendship. Yeah, it's a friendship. Um, you know, uh, you know what? Just wait. Shout out to the the Kalons really quick. They, when they were talking to themselves, I'm pretty sure it was just like fax machine sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing that I noticed that freaking Seth MacFarlane did the Kalon. I knew I'd heard that name before. Mm -hmm. If you go back and watch um Star Trek: The Next Generation, um, it's the episode with Wagzana. Waxana comes on and she actually falls in love with a guy um, from this planet, the Kalons. Um, and at the age of four, at the age of fifty, they are expected to basically they have a big party and then they kill themselves. So Waxana was completely against, against it, but I, I think maybe he took that name from Star Trek because they did have a race um, called the Kalon. Interesting. Um, so, <laughs> moving on, uh, number six, how is Isaac and Claire's marriage going? Well, I feel like we talked about them a little bit earlier. Um, I want to, I would want to see how that's going, but more, I would want to see what it's like for them actually out in the field as a married couple. But like, I don't really care about what's happening with their relationship personally. Mm -hmm. Like I know the emotion things, but I feel like that's gonna be have to do more with what happens with Timis and how, and that's gonna have a play with between them. I would really more like to see them out in the field, like in action as a couple, and see them get in situations like that. Right, because you know what? If I really think about it, I, in all through Star Trek, you never saw a married couple, except for Worf and Jadzia. Worf and Jadzia, yeah. Worf and Jadzia. So 
And I feel like just like with Fringe Zia, there's some... It ended because the freaking powers that be sucked and wouldn't give Terry Farrell what she wanted. Anyways, but I digress again. But I feel like it's going to be like a War Fringe Jet Zia pairing to where it was growing pains. Like, it, yes. it took a lot for them to get to the place where they were before she died. And I yeah, feel no, like... you're not wrong. You're not like wrong. The lack of emotion from Isaac is going to come back to haunt them. At some point, enter Timis. Enter Timis. I also feel like it would be cool to see if Isaac wanted to raise a kid from birth to know what it's like to wow. parent a child from birth. I think Ooh. that would be interesting. Where's um, the sperm going to come from? I could see him totally asking Malloy. Since Malloy made that joke on the last episode, you know, Doctor uh, Claire's Doctor Finn's my doctor. You know, she seen me naked and she still married another man. I think that would be pretty cool because you know he doesn't have a family like that of his own. Right. So I think he would be down for. I think he's the one person who would be down for like you know donating his sperm. It'd be very awkward for him though to see a uh, Kalon raising his like child. Uncle 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 um Uncle Malloy. Yeah. I mean that'd be that'd be yeah. a weird dynamic. I would hope they pick someone off the sh- off ship uh-huh. <laughs> to, to do that, but it would definitely yeah. Well, I can see that, and I feel like Isaac would make a great father. To be honest with you, I did too. Um, and also, let's see here. Her Claire sons, Marcus and Ty. I like not one. Of them. You don't like either one of them. I mean, they'll be grown men if this goes on for too long. <laughs> <laughs> Recast. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have to recast those poor boys. Or do a time skip. Yeah. See a time skip would be better. I think um with Marcus, I don't think Marcus probably he probably wouldn't be in it. Maybe he's leaving to go maybe join maybe the union. Like, yeah, like an academy a union academy. Yeah. Um That'd actually, be a cool spin-off. Right. And that actually leads me into what uh Topa, like because you know Topa. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. In the tale of two Topa, she wanted she was training to because she wanted to go to the Union Academy. So it would be cool to see maybe those set off um, in one episode to go to the Union Academy together. Um, I watched a spinoff show with with him and and, and um, with Topa and Marcus. Thank you. I want to <laughs> Anaya. I, oh, they could bring Anaya into it. Yeah, maybe, I would. I, so they, could do, they could do a time skip. Mm-hmm. Get, uh, somehow get Anaya. Mm-hmm. They get Topa. They get mm-hmm. Marcus. And Ty. And Ty. Nah, not Ty. No. Nah. Ty's the one I don't like, to be honest. The little kid? Yeah, little, uh, it's a little sweetie. Let me leave uh, Ty alone. Uh, I don't like him. Um, <laughs> and I feel like, how would Bordis and Cletus react? Yeah, Cletus. Clytus. Clytus. Clyden. Clyden. Uh, when you used to get him, yeah. Why are you messing with him? Clyden. I feel like Bordis and Clyden, I mean, how would they react to being empty nesters? I feel like... I don't think they survive. I don't think they survive either. I mean, yeah, they were, they didn't have the egg when the show started, but I feel like... They were kind of rocking. There's a right? there's a lot ha- that has happened in this because of Clyden. Because one, he basically forced Bordis to uh to have their daughter tr- transition to a boy. That is true. And Bordis didn't want that, and that's what led him to that whole porn addiction mm-hmm. because he didn't want to be with Clyden. He was holding it against him. And then fast forward, he's always like what he did to Bordis's ex boyfriend. I remember he him as a straight guy to the to the to the Mocklin. He likes girls. Yeah, and 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 poor uh poor Tala, who she actually felt something for Lokar, he for her. She had to do the right thing. She had to let people. She had to get him to confess that you know he faked his death because you can't let Clyden go to prison for something he didn't do. No, they need Even to let she, Clyden go to prison. Yeah, she Clyden should let Clyden go to prison. Worst. He deserved it. He, he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved it. it. And, this, and you ruined this man's life. Not just this man's life. You ruined this man's family's life. Because why? Like, it wasn't like he was hitting on your man. He wasn't even doing nothing wrong. He wasn't doing anything. And that and that's why I like when Tala... Tala's like, besides Kelly, is the only person who's read Clyde in the right act. Like, you can you can go to hell. Like, mm-hmm. you just... Pre- like, you're prejudiced. Like, you got issues, bro. He's hateful. He's very hateful. And I think the reason he acts like that, it goes back to the tale of two Topas when he tells Bordis, like, we're not telling Topa anything. We're not telling Topa who he truly is mm-hmm. because... Uh, Clyden was born a female. That's he right. Said it would have been better. He said, 
being ignorant is better than despair. So I feel like despite the fact That's that Flyden has been transitioned to a male from birth, um, from infanthood or whatever you want to call it himself, when he found out that hatred, that self-hatred that is self -hatred. in him. And he's like, yeah. he hates everybody. And it's not because of them. It's because he hates himself. Because he hates himself he more hates than himself. anyone else. Yeah, yeah because he knows he's not authentic. Well, I feel that's what it is for him. He feels like he's not authentic, even though he has a batusa, whatever you call it. <laughs> I'm, pu I'm pulling that word from the roots. <laughs> but I feel like it's a self-hatred. Yeah. And he's putting that on everybody else, especially Topa. I do want to say, though, his him letting Grayson sit down with them at dinner was a nice gesture. It was a nice gesture until he gets pissed off again. Well, obviously. Yeah. He, he, he obviously didn't even look like he wanted her to sit down. Because look what happened, though. He offered. He offered. He tried. He tried. He tried. You can respect someone for making an attempt. Yes, but he needs to deal with cladding issues. But... That's also, five. he <laughs> left Bordis. He and he left, left Topa. He sure like, he's did. been racking up negative points. Speaking constantly. of which, though, I mean, speaking of him leaving Bordis and us talking about Grayson, how about that episode where. Oh, uh, Midnight Blue. Were, yeah, mm -hmm. you were. We think of you as part of the family. Yeah, that was a very intense moment. That was oh, It was a callback to Change of Heart from season six, Deep Space Nine. It's a, it's a, I felt like it was a callback to Change of Heart from Star Trek um, D Space Nine when Worf and Jazir were out in the middle of nowhere, Jazir gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Kelly got hurt and, and, uh, and Bordis is, you know, fixing her up. Mm -hmm. And they have this little moment, this this eye contact. Yeah, it was lingering. Where I literally thought they were going to make out. It really did seem like they were about to kiss her. It, it, it was, did. I feel like there's something there between the two of them. And it's odd, isn't it? It's it, very because odd. Because it's not something that I would have I would have ever put together. Yeah, I would have never thought about but putting those so together. it makes so much sense. It does. And I feel like... I mean, I don't think... It might not happen. I mean, especially with Bordis and Clyde's recommitment, which I don't think that that's crap. I, I, I could never trust Clyden if I was Bordis. No. I could never go back to that original way I felt if I was Bordis. Well, you know what? This is why a time skip would really help. A time skip would really help because they can skip some of the, oh, this happened or this happened. Like, they just non-renew Clyden's contract. <laughs> don't re don't bring him back. I mean, because we all know, if you watch one of my other videos, Chad L. Coleman, I don't have anything against you as a person, <laughs> but the characters you play, my dude, I them. hate them. All of them. All of them. <laughs> From Tyrese to Spencer's dad on All-American to Clyden on the Orville and whatever else you've played in, I'm sure I'll hate <laughs> the characters you play. But nothing against you personally as a human you're a being. Phenomenal actor. Phenomenal actor, and you're really good at making me hate all your characters. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah. I, f I feel like that's how they do it. They just it needs to go and he's gone. And then maybe maybe what happens is we we, we come back to it and Topa is going off to the academy, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe she is going off to the academy mm -hmm. and Bordis and Kelly spend more time together because, you know, now he's an empty nester. Clyden's out of the picture. Finally, um, uh, Mercer is finally back with Talia. Right. Oh, that's gonna be a bumpy road. <laughs> yeah. To lay all be on the bridge wearing a, a union uniform. Yeah. And so she would never. She would I never. Know. She would never. But that's what. I, that's what I want though. I <laughs> no. want her to join the union. I want her to have the same personality. Mm -hmm. Be on the union side. I can see her being on the union side, but she will never don a union uniform. How great would that be? No, she wouldn't. She would never. She would hate it so much. Never. But imagine if they made her. She could be like. A security officer like Tala, like they could run security together. Mm -hmm. It'd be unstoppable. That'd be cool. I don't know. I, I see her and her and Tala being friends before her and Kelly ever having oh, any kind of common ground. For sure. <laughs> like what was those <laughs> shots she was throwing at her in the last episode? <laughs> oh no, no, in a gentle rain. Why don't you go run into the run into the arms of another? That's what you're good at, or something like that. She told and, her. But you know what else? Um, I think which one was in the, which? Uh, who beat Talia? Was that Tala? That was Tala who beat Talia, right? Um, no. Or was it Grayson? It was Kelly. She okay. she was she was beating her good, and then Tala Talia got the upper hand, and then Tala came and saved the day. I feel like Talia definitely would have killed 
Grayson. Um, but I feel like she could respect Tala because of the strength. Right. So they, she may not like any of them, but she'll respect people. Yeah, she'll respect Tala. I feel like Tala is a very this is what it is kind of person. Yeah. And I think that yeah, so her and Talia would be would be cool, I think. And you know that same logic is why I think that Krill Machman relationship that Alliance actually would have held up even with Talia in the role because uh even though they didn't they didn't want her to leave because she's a woman, she said it. She's like, you know, I do have to commend you as someone I once heard someone say, you've got balls. Yeah. Right? You got so some she, balls to come to Krill. She res <laughs> she she respects she res that. Yeah. So uh anyways, I'm I feel like that would be a great segue to get Kelly and Bordis together. You get Mercer out of the way, you get Clyde out of the way, you get Topa out of the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could also use Topa to bring them together because... Like Alexander with Worf Indiana yeah. from Star Trek so in the next that. generation. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then what would happen is that... You know what would happen is that uh, the Krill... <laughs> I don't know why I'm... The Krill Alliance and Malcolm Alliance parts, right? Clyde decides to take back his old job. He's gone on an extended period trying to rebuild relations for the Mocklins and the Union. He comes back with, he comes back to Grayson and Bordis, mm -hmm. um, taking care of Topa and, and in the middle of one of those situations. Mm -hmm. And and that right there, that's how you do it. That's how you get Bordis and Kelly together. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. What do you what do you got? How do you think it happens? Feel like. They have a moment while Cl Clyden is still on the ship, you know, the Orville. Mm. I feel like maybe Bordis and Kelly get trapped on a world like Beverly and Picard did. Classic. Yeah, and Star Trek The Next Generation, and then they're forced to confront their feelings for each other, um, just like um, Beverly and Picard did. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that's going to have to be worked up to. And something we may never get to see, you know, the fruit of. Don't do that to anyone. But we know it's going to happen the way the show leads <laughs> off. It's just we don't get to see it unless we, we read a book. I don't like that. I want to <laughs> see the stuff. I don't like... You want to see the stuff? Yeah. Well, I mean, not that stuff. I just mean I want to I want to see it come to fruition. True, true. Um, you know, and I would love to see maybe Lokar come back. For Tala. Lokar. Lokar. Uh, Bordis' boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Mm, I would like to see, if, if if not those two, I would like to see Tokar. I mean, Lokar and Tala. Mm. I think that's the more the more obvious choice. Because it it's easy. Um, it is. But um, moving is. on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, number three. Shadow Realm Demons. They, will they, they promise they will be back. So... Episode two, Shadow Realms, season three. I think this was my favorite episode really? of season three. And it's just the way it was written and the the way the whole episode flowed. It was just amazing to me because I didn't expect an episode like that, which it was kind of this, the same feel as uh, uh, the Genesis episode. I'm going to keep referring to Star Trek The Next Generation or Star Trek Deep Space Nine because... I'm seeing a lot of callbacks in all of these ep uh, the Orville episodes. I think it's the closest comparison. Yeah. So the episode Genesis, when everyone on the ship got mute or mutated mm -hmm. and, uh, or de-evolved mm -hmm. into uh, previous you know form of their species. So you have uh, you have the the Union being given permission by the Krill to go into Krill space to um, what was it the the Nakloff system. <laughs> and then the, the Krill, you know, in, in good faith, because they're trying to build relations. Obviously, this is early in season three. Early. Early in Before season three. Before the assassination. Three. Yeah. <laughs> so they give them permission. They tell them, you know, we're just going to put a tracking beacon on your on your vessel so we know fair. who you are. That, that is totally fair. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, the Admiral, Admiral Christie agrees. And Admiral Christie actually turns out to be the ex-husband of Dr. Claire Finn. So that was a yeah. nice spin right there. Um so oh, they weird. tell him, yeah, <laughs> they tell him we want to go into the, uh, uh, into what was that, that, that system? The knock, knock off, Not right. the knockoff system. They wanted to go into the expanse, the, expanse. the Kalar expanse. The, yeah, the expanse. Yeah. They wanted to go into the Kalar expanse and the Krill were like, hold up. 
the Clark oh, experience. What are, you, what, what are you talking about? Like y'all, you guys want to go there? You don't want to go there? Well, you, you know, die? there's <laughs> demons there that inhabit your body and steal your soul, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and so basically, of course, you know, humans like ah. Uh, what are you talking about? These crazy fanatical religious guys. <laughs> crazy trail. <laughs> we can handle ourselves. Yeah. Buddy. But what they forget is, and what they didn't think about is, the the, the krill are a, basically a warrior race. They are all about the fight. And if the krill don't want to go to this place, that should tell you something. So why are you trying to go? So they go into the Kalaris. They, they go into the um the Kalar expanse, and they come upon this ship. And inside the ship, it's like a homing beacon that was right. not, like a distress it was like signal. Them. Yeah, yeah, it's calling them. So they, of course, go down. No protective gear. Like, whose idea was this? No protective gear. They're looking around this big cavern. And, of course, Admiral Christie puts his big face in some kind of, looks like a butthole. <laughs> he puts his face right in it. And then it just opens up. And unbeknownst to him, shoots something in his face. I can't judge anyone. Never mind. Yeah, let's not go there. Okay. <laughs> there was nothing good that was going to come. Not for the rest of that, no. Yeah, no, no, no you're right. So, 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 of course, the guy, to make a long story short, gets contaminated with these um, these bacterial spores yeah. that starts immediately re rewriting his DNA and turning him into a completely different species. And then from then on, he's infecting other people in on the ship, yeah. only he's doing it with a more potent uh, substance, like just being shot out well, of his because mouth. because now it knows the physiology. It knows how to better attack it. Well, well, no, no, because of the way they described it is they, the people he affected were getting the more potent version of those spores. Because now that he's been turned, he has the venom or what have you, that he could just spit out and they're turning like that. Remember, it took some time for him yeah. to turn with the spores. So, so they... Dr. Finn ends up coming up with a way to basically get the upper hand. She creates a basically a, a common cold, and she threatens to put it throughout the whole ship. And because their their physiology, because of their they've just turned, their immune system is really low. Yeah. So she tells him, you know, she finds uh, Admiral Christie because of the Zelayan band he had that he was wearing when he basically turned. She tells him, like, look leave or i'm gonna kill all i want to kill all of you and they tell and he tells her like you'll see you'll be one of us and we'll go but not forever Shoot. so i so they are a, a group that i really want to see and what the krill tells Admiral christy before any of this stuff happens before they go to the expense uh the krill says salah tala ka vaspa koloi and they're like, what does that mean? He goes, it's a prayer for people who are for ones that are about to die. <laughs> and so it's like, you got a crew warning you. They're, they're spouting off some crazy prayer. And well, I still go into the expanse. And you see, that's actually, that's another, that right there is another um, side story spinoff that I'd be interested in seeing how they got the, the demons to be dormant because they were dormant, mm -hmm. right? And if they spread that fast, I think they explain it to where because because at the towards in the middle of the episode that that beacon that was calling them started sending out another signal telling it was a homing beacon saying basically come on come back we got some people yeah so you got another vessel coming from God knows where um to to and that's why Admiral Christie used his codes to shut the Orville down. So, so that they couldn't leave. So they couldn't leave. Right. So they was going to get everybody because it's a species that they don't have. They, this is their way of procreating. Like the, the, the spores. Yeah. So they take you and you become them. So, yeah, it is just like the Borg. And I think the Orville had a better spin of how they infect the, peop um, the people that they take. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to see them. I don't know what they're called. I would really like to know... Um, what they're going to call them because they didn't give them a name. We just yeah. know that Krill called them the shadow demons. I like the way they say of us, it makes it sound like a hive mind type thing. Right, like like a better version of the Borg, or scarier version actually. Well, I mean, I think the Kalon are really a version of the Borg as well. Yeah. Like the way they the way they operate, mm -hmm. the way they're about efficiency. Um, who think will win, the Kalon or the Borg? I think, I think the Borg. And only because the Borg, no matter what you throw at them, they become a, they adapt to it. 
That is true. So you have to do what you're going to do fast, do otherwise they're going to adapt. Um, yeah, man. And another, before we move on to uh, number two, I had some other honorable mentions that I thought of. Um, I want to see Dan again. You remember Dan? Mm-mm. The big head guy from the first two seasons. Actually, you last saw him, in, I think, Gentle Rain, season three. But he always had something funny to, funny to say. Um, his his tagline was sweetness. No, I need to see him. I can't think. I can't picture him. Yeah, he, I just keep picturing uh, Saru. Not Saru. Oh my God, I love Saru from uh, from uh, Discovery. Discovery. Yeah. But no, he was the guy who was in the elevator at that one time. Remember when Derulio came on board? The guy that Kelly cheated with, and he kept meeting up with the captain and Kelly in the elevator, and he was telling them that they should have some music in the elevators. Yeah, you you just gotta go back and watch it. Like I I, I, I really like to see name. Dan again. He they didn't have enough of him in season three. Hmm. Um, and Denal. From uh, season three, episode three, she was the she was um and the Nile was the alien. She was the descendant. Yeah, yeah the, she was the, the descendant. descendant. She was from like fifty thousand years. Yeah, from season one, episode fourteen. Um, her just her ancestors. She came. From, those were her ancestors, and it was they were they were they advanced fifty thousand years, and all since that time, because while in during that episode. Like every 11 days, like their technology was advancing and their world was between two universes at the same time. Like That's it was crazy. crazy. So it makes sense that, you see, that was another callback. That's why I said I, I like the way Seth MacFarlane is doing this because you can watch an episode and then all the way to the end, you be like, you find out, oh man, that was a callback to that episode. Yeah, he doesn't want you to forget certain yeah. storylines so he can bring it back up. And yeah. I, I think it was smart the way um, they did wrap up season three, like it could be the end if it had to be right but they didn't make it so final to where they can't come back from stuff or can pick up other storylines and stuff like that right i i would like to see what happens with those people because it won't be the last to come up right right because I mean, she said that we, i'll powerful. see you again she said i'll right. see you again so um i'm excited to uh to see what happens with that um do you think that type of technology where they can go in and and do stuff in the brain is something that they could use to somehow get the Kalon's emo- permanent emotions? I don't know. That would be interesting. I don't think it'll happen, but that would be interesting. Um, but yeah, so You're those are the two you. honorable mentions that I, I really... Um, I would like to see Dan and i like to see Denal again. Um, I hope the episode, because it was par- uh, Mortality Paradox, that was the episode we saw Denal. That's it's a weird least, episode. Yeah, I did. I did not care for that episode in season three. I think it was actually. Yeah, it was actually episode three. Yeah, yeah. I didn't care for it. I didn't either. Um, and it's actually the episode that I I always skip over when I go back to watch it. I don't blame you. <laughs> um, my uh, the other episode that I, I really don't watch is um when uh Malloy goes back in time. I, yeah, I don't care for that one either. It was a great episode. I think it was great acting, mm-hmm. but. I didn't enjoy it. It kind of makes me wonder what was the point of it. I feel like the point, and it's also another episode that never aired too. Hmm. So I'll be interested to see that episode, but I think the point of the Malloy story, I mean, it, obviously it was a call back to the previous season, season two, when he found that phone, but I feel like they just needed to give Malloy something to do. Give him his own standalone episode almost. Yeah, I can see that. I, because I, I really see no real point to that. Oh, actually, you know what? In that episode, we did get to see it was the B story. And actually, I would, I'd, I'd rather see it as the A story, the relationship or the friction between Isaac and Charlie. Because we they oh, were that's paired a great up. Point. Yeah, they, they were. They were paired up. That so is true. That was a good thing that came out of that episode because Isaac was spending his time early on trying to figure out how to basically get back in her, con- on her good side. Yeah, for lack of a better phrase, get back on her, get home, get, not get back, but get, get on, on it, her period. good side <laughs> and try to understand her. And she basically told him, like, look, you killed, because of you, somebody I loved and never got to tell them that I loved them died. And so she's stuck in this moment of Amanda sacrificing herself for her and her and never being able to tell the person that you love that you love them. So... She's stuck in that moment and just seeing Isaac and knowing that he's a reason for it. Yeah. She basically tells him, this is your fault. Like, like I, I don't like you. 
don't try to get to freaking know me. I'm doing my job, you and that's all I have to do. Fantastic writing, because you're right. They do they do frame it like a B story, but it's actually the main mm -hmm. part of this. It's the main most important thing in that episode. Yeah, I think because that was because if it wasn't for that episode, Domino wouldn't hit as hard. Yeah. Because you didn't, you wouldn't know why she just hates it. Like in that episode, you find out why she hates him so much. Yeah. And it's it's not just because of what he did; it's because of who who and what he took from her. Yeah. So That's yeah. Great, great, great catch. You're so smart. You're <laughs> about all that stuff. I can't. I, I like. I remember it when you tell me. <laughs> all right. So number two. The petition started by Popcast on October 18, 2021. So as of today. Um, actually, I checked this a couple of days ago, but as of a couple of days ago, there were 30,934 signatures um, 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 on this um, petition, petition <laughs> to get uh, a season four for the Orville. Um, it was addressed to Seth MacFarlane, the Walt Disney Company, and Jordan Hellman, um, who at the time of this, I don't know if he's still the head of Hulu, but he's the head of Hulu. He's the Hulu's head of script co scripted content. Okay. So... We basically get the they, green they, light. Yeah, stuff. so we are hoping and praying that this works. Um, with the writer's strike now and everything that's going on, it's taking even yeah. longer. Yeah. So I just hope, I just hope the Orville season four or uh, the Orville New Horizon season two <laughs> makes it past the culling of TV shows that are making a quick exodus because of the writer's strike or budget restraints. Um, they've already stripped one of my favorite shows down, Bob Hart's Abby Shola. Did they really? Yeah, they all the great characters, only two characters remain um, uh, uh, basically main characters. Everyone else has been bumped down to reoccurring. Guaranteed only five episodes. So, wow. And there's a rumor that there's only going to be um, 10 or 13 episodes. In the in the fifth season, wow. which marks the end of a series usually, so um, hopefully the Orville uh, makes it out of like I said the culling, and we get to see our favorite characters again. I know the actors, um, they're itching to do it too. Um, after the show, series. yeah, after season three ended though, they were all released from their contracts. They're free to do other things, but they want to come back, especially Jay Lee. Uh, Jay Lee, he um, he plays John Lamar. He tweets about it sometimes. He's like he's like missing, you know, missing. He's missing the set. He's missing, you know, um, the co-stars and things like that. And he wants to definitely come back. Um, you got uh, Penny Marshall. Not Penny Marshall. God rest her soul. But you got Penny Johnson. <laughs> wow. You got Penny Johnson dropping tweets as well. Um, it was one, I, I, I'll show, and I'll um, show it to you guys hey, um, at the end of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> you got Penny Marshall saying, you know, here all while this is taking way too long. Hashtag mm -hmm. sci-fi withdrawal. <laughs> so, so, you know, and, and McFarlane, he's saying that he remains cautiously hopeful. Well, yeah, I mean, he's put, it's clear that he's put so much effort and love into crafting the series, curating the cast, and and you know crafting the characters to be to make it a, a, a actual modern day star trek type so like a, a modern day sci-fi classic which i feel like this really is mm -hmm. we haven't gotten I mean, that honestly that goes right into number one with what the show has meant yeah there hasn't in my in my opinion there hasn't been any tv show or really movie to carry the traditional sci-fi mantle for I mean, Star Trek, Star Wars, and there's really nothing else up. I mean, you could, some people might argue like uh, Stargate back in the day. Um, they had an interesting twist and some definitely some good stuff there. Um, but outside of that, I can't think of anything post 2000 that wasn't Star Trek or Stargate or Star Wars that was a real serious contender for an actual sci-fi classic right and I, I think as far as what it means to me with number one is anything star trek i watch with the exception of star trek enterprise you won't mention that travesty 
You you don't remember Star Trek Enterprise, do you? I remember um, Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula. Yeah. I remember it being good, was it not? I've seen it in forever, so <laughs> I, I couldn't even get through. I couldn't even get through the series um, back when it first aired. I remember that. Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't get through it. It was no, no. It's not good. Okay. It's, and it wasn't the cast. It's just I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it's it's a Star Trek that a lot of people like to forget. <laughs> and I don't blame them. Okay. Um, but as far as the Orville, like the fact that I resisted for so long to watch the Orville because of my preconceived notions of who I thought Seth MacFarlane was and what he was about, mm -hmm. it just makes me sad because I could have been enjoying this show when it first aired. A lot longer. A yeah. lot longer. I could have loved it for a lot longer. So I feel like with Star Trek, whenever I watch anything Star Trek, I smile. It just, it takes me back to my childhood and it takes me back to my sister who introduced me to Star Trek, Star Trek, writing Star Trek fan fiction. Um, and I don't know, maybe that has something to do with it. It just makes me smile and it makes me happy. Whenever I'm depressed, I put on some Star Trek, namely Worf and Jezia episodes, <laughs> Worf and Deanna episodes. Right. But it just makes me smile. And now with the Orville, it's the same thing is I can't help smiling. Like it's just something about this show that just makes you happy in the way that Seth MacFarlane has constructed it in like so meticulously each episode, each script. And it makes it, he makes it relate to the here and now. Like, it's modern. That's now. why I said the majority rule episode, that's when I realized how great Seth MacFarlane was because he's right in the majority rule, people are afraid of being downloaded. Like you're afraid of being canceled. If you say something that the majority doesn't like, and it could be something as small as dancing on a statue, which is what uh, Lamar did. He was dancing <laughs> on a statue and he got a bunch of downvoters and almost executed for it. <laughs> so it just goes back to the ridiculousness of trial by media. Yeah, It's ridiculous. And people are afraid to do or say or be who they are because they don't want to be looked down on. Because that is essentially like the way it is now. It's um, a great way to frame modern problems, but still in a fun and enjoyable right. sci-fi world. Like I said, it's like a, it's to me, it's a modern day sci-fi uh, staple. Like not just a, not just a classic, not just a, a great example. It's, it's what sci-fi should look like in the 21st century. Of us watching it. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What it should look like for us watching a, a science fiction show made after 2020. Uh, uh, made after, I'm sorry, 2010. Because mm -hmm. there, there's really been nothing else that's sci-fi, that's truly sci-fi, that sticks to the, the whole sci-fi formula of space explorers, meeting new aliens, spaceships, battles, unions and factions there's not really been anything else like that, that i can think of um there's a couple of shows out there like the expanse i try um which it's not for me i get why some people like it um and honestly i can't think of anything else that was that's been this good that's up there yeah so i can I, i've been watching this actually i went back and started watching it like, i've been watching it again for like a week mm -hmm. straight just back to back all 10 episodes of season three and then going back and watching the previous seasons. <laughs> it's like, I just can't get enough because it's just the characters and you can see, I can see myself or something about me in each character. Like with um, the doctor, how much she loves her kids, does anything for them. Yeah. Like, I love my son. That's my, <laughs> little, that's my little dude. But, um, and then with Bordis, like his deadpan attitude. That's kind of how I am. You? <laughs> yeah. Deadpan? Yeah, no, he's, no, he's kind of, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I can see, I can see myself, a little bit of myself in each character. And I think that's also what helps me relate um, to them. And then also in all the other shows that I like, is I have to find something. I have to see some familiar, familiarity. Is that, did I say that right? Some familiarity <laughs> in, the, in, in the characters. Um, maybe not necessarily maybe mirroring me or but mirroring something or someone that I care about. Yeah. So yeah. you did a great job of taking a, a a classic idea and putting a different spin on it to where it's still it it has to 
the spirit of old school sci-fi, but it's his own it's thing. It's its own thing. It stands on its own legs. It stands on its own legs. It has its own creativity. The characters are not the characters from other shows. Right. I mean, there may be hom- homages, yeah. homages to them, but, but not, it's not them. It's not a copy of another show. It's its right. own show that stands, in my, in my view, side by side with things like Star Trek and yeah. Star Wars and yeah. Farscape. Not Farscape. Mm-hmm. Stargate. Yeah. <laughs> and not Farscape. And I actually feel like there's some... It was an episode. I can't remember which one it was right it's now. Good. But I do... It, there was one instance where I feel like he did certain things better than Star Trek. He took certain storylines and did them better. And and made them relatable. In general, I've, I enjoy the Orville more than I've enjoyed any Star Trek series. Except mm-hmm. for maybe Discovery. Discovery was very good. With the ex- I had to get used to the, I didn't the see Klingons. The, I didn't see the last season. But, the, the Klingons were weird. Yeah, thank God they changed that in Strange New Worlds. I don't know whose idea it Klingons was. were weird. That they were very the weird. The story with the Klingons were great. Well, the, but yeah, the look very great. of the Klingons was very weird. Yeah. Um, I didn't see the last season of Discovery. but I didn't either. I fell off with it because I didn't... I, it, it started to bore me, and I didn't. And I didn't. Li- I wanted to stop watching it before I didn't I like still it. Still liked it. Yeah, I wanted to stop watching it while I still. But liked we it. still like this, and we stopped watching it. But there's more for you all to make, so we need you to make season four, season five, season six, etc. Exactly. So we can keep talking about it, keep watching. Okay, and please help this poor lady. I keep seeing her doing like this on the Twitter, like. This is taking too long. It's it really Twitter. she's expressing the feelings of every fan. This is yeah. taking way too long. Um, but I don't want this uh, podcast to be too long. You guys, okay. we got some things to do. Yeah, we got some off. editing to do. So uh, we want to thank you guys for joining us for our first podcast. Lightning podcast. The hope and search for the Orville season four, the hope or and search for the Orville, the Orville New Horizon season two, <laughs> whatever fits your fancy. I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. Whatever you decide <laughs> to name it, just make it. Just make it. <laughs> so uh, this is a heartfelt plea to Disney, Disney. Seth MacFarlane, MacFarlane. Hulu. Hulu, make it work, y'all. Figure it out. And if you guys go to Netflix, we're here for it. Even if y'all need some group counseling, <laughs> see how you know it all come together. You know, I'll donate. To that, to that bill, well, to that. No, I'm just, no, I'm saying I'll donate if it takes you know some counseling. <laughs> Get everybody on the same page. That's so funny. But all right. So, uh, so yeah. Once again, thank you. Uh, like, subscribe to the new channel, and we're out. Yeah. Okay. Lynn, we're out. Peace. Peace. <laughs>